It's really great to have you with us this morning, especially if you're a guest. Uh, I really want to pass on my thanks on your behalf to Phil and his team of brilliant actors for putting together such a beautiful production. Uh, I have the unenviable task of following that performance, knowing that the highlight of the morning has just been and gone. I am wondering, though, how many of you tuned in to watch the government's press conference yesterday afternoon? Some of you, you'll have been relieved that the government has tightened Christmas restrictions. Others frustrated that Christmas plans are ruined and others equally frustrated that the government didn't go far enough. We'll each have an opinion on the topic. The shifting goalposts of what you can and can't do are interesting on a number of levels. Many people will feel more vulnerable during this season, more lonely. Christmas won't feel like it often does or how we'd like it to be. And there are going to be Christmas presents that are going to have to wait until the spring to be shed. But the restrictions of lockdown force us to reflect on what we're missing, what we most value. Maybe in some cases help us see fresh opportunities. An example of that is, is for us as a church, there's been a fresh opportunity to serve our community through our food bank. We've massively scaled up our operation and given away about, I estimate about two and a half, 3,000 emergency food parcels this year. And we've had incredible support from individual volunteers, businesses, and the local council for our work. It's been quite humbling to see the, the unity of purpose. It's been a real silver lining during this season to see people gathering together to serve the community the way it has. And if you're a volunteer at the food bank or you've made a donation in some way, uh, thank you so much for your support. There is perhaps an opportunity in this season, even to have a, a fresh view of Christmas. This, this fresh view is possibly foisted on us, whether we like it or not. I'm going to miss staying with family. I'm going to miss the carnage of kids from multiple families ripping over presents, making a big old fat, dirty mess all over the floor. I'm going to miss large numbers around the dinner table. But I wonder if there's an opportunity somewhere. This is a, a wondering rather than a structured thought. Whether less travel, less people, less gifts, generally just less, might somehow offer a window. Not a replacement, but a different view. A different view of Christmas. A view of the Bethlehem stable that isn't strewn with party poppers. A view of the manger with fewer voices. A taste of Jesus with fewer flavours being passed around the table. See, I, I, I have become increasingly aware this year of how much I, I just fill my life to the brim with activity and how occupied my mind is. Even when, I'm, even when I'm still, even when I'm not doing something, there's this endless tax on my attention that means I'm too often completely preoccupied and not fully present in the moment. At Silk Life Church, our intention is to stake everything on the hope of Jesus. To the extent where this hope shapes everything we do. It entirely shapes the culture of our community. Jesus promised that he had come to give life and give it to the full. But what does that mean in a, in a country, in a, in a season of life where a pandemic and the government seems to be kind of impairing what life looks like? What does it look like practically to experience life to the full at the moment? Well, I'm wondering if it means intentionally slowing down to be with Jesus and journeying with him through every season of life, the ones we like and the ones we don't. It means caring for one another with acceptance, love and encouragement equipping each other to put God first in every area of life and building each other up, building a community of faith that's a, a beacon of hope and a resource for the region. The peace, wisdom, 
and hope we experience in Jesus is to be a blessing to others, not just ourselves. The resources he gives us here as a community is to be a resource for the wider community. Macclesfield community should be better off for having a vibrant Jesus-shaped church at the heart of it. We want to be a community of resilient disciples that are able to stand firm when the going gets tough and still be fruitful in all areas of life. We believe that the normal Christian life should be flavoured and seasoned by the presence and work of God. It isn't just about Sunday morning. It isn't just a, a gentle nod to a dusty old book and a historic building. As disciples, we choose to offer our whole lives as worship to him. Faith in Jesus is not a set of rules, not some arbitrary boundaries, but truly a source of joy and contentment in all circumstances. And life can be tough and circumstances can get gritty. And 2020 has been one long test of endurance for everyone. And yet still, as we choose to orientate our life around following him, we expect to experience and savour the love, grace and presence of God. We expect to learn to discern his voice and his direction for our lives and those around us. We expect to grow in maturity and can increasingly reflect the nature of God in our own character and behaviour. We expect to move in step with and by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit and to see his wisdom and his values permeating every area of life. We expect to belong within a church family. And actually, we, we can't do it all in person at the moment. But being together, belonging together, is so key that we'll use tools like Zoom to keep meeting together and keep encouraging each other, keep building each other up. Our building may be shut at the moment, but the church is living and well. The church is the people, not the bricks. The church is gathered around this screen this morning. In fact, the church is gathering in hordes online all around the world. The church isn't just this tiny little pocket of believers in front of me. We belong to a global church reflecting God's purpose and heart for all nations and cultures. And you might be sitting there thinking, so what, Dave? Why are you telling me all this? Well, the truth is COVID has splintered society into tiny pockets because shielding and isolation and working from home has made many of us feel alone. And because sickness and death is at the forefront of our minds much more than we're used to in the UK, it forces us to ask the big questions of life. Because this COVID season has increased anxiety and stress levels for so many of us. I haven't been a Christian my whole life. I, I didn't grow up in church. As a young man, I was actually a bit of a bear with a sore head trying to work out what life is really all about. What's my life really all about? A really bad rebel without a cause, to be honest. But as a Christian, I found many things that enrich my life. But this morning, I want to give you three P's. It's always helpful to remember. And I was say to the person next to you, people, purpose and peace. You can say it to the wall if you sat there in a room by yourself. As Christians, we expect to belong in a community. Jesus describes the church as his body, his hands and his feet, if you like. It isn't a geographical community. We're here in Salford. Many of you are there in Macclesfield and some of you are much, much further afield. It isn't a biological community. It's a community of believers that stretches around the globe but it's still a community of deep relational bonds united around the person of Jesus. And in that we find a purpose. God is the most purposeful entity in the universe. And as a child of God, I get to share in that purpose. So there's not a single day that goes by where I don't have a reason to breathe where I don't have a reason to invest myself in the most worthwhile and the most meaningful things 
of life. And in that, I found peace. A peace that really defies logic, peace that really defies circumstances. I didn't make it myself, so I, equally I can't break it. It doesn't get buffeted or washed away by the circumstances. And not that every day is easy, but there's a source of peace that's not from me. I don't have to make it. Somehow it is above or beyond the circumstances of life. It strikes me as, as a great deal. Actually, it's kind of scandalous because I don't bring a lot to the table, to be honest. But somehow I gain a massive amount. And so Christmas is a, a celebration of the birth of Jesus. And he is the source of all belonging, purpose and peace. He's the antidote for so much loneliness, anxiety and fear. So there's much for me to celebrate. My prayer for us is that each one of us would engage with him in a deeper way this year as we seek to make sense of the circumstances around us. If you allow me, I'd, I'd just like to, to pray for each one of us. You, it, you may not be somebody that, that prays regularly. Feel free to just sit and observe or reflect in it, whatever way you choose. But I'm going to be speaking, addressing Jesus and asking him to bless each one of us. Jesus, we don't understand everything that's happening around us right now. And to be honest, we don't like all of it. But I'm so glad that we don't have to go it alone. In you, we find belonging and purpose and hope. Fill us with your peace and hope this Christmas. Capture our attention, not for what is lost, but for all that we can experience in you. We celebrate your birth. We celebrate your presence with us. We celebrate our eternal hope in you. Reveal yourself to each one of us. Gather us up into yourself. Breathe on us, fill us, renew us, and fill us with life to the full. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm going to hand over to Joe and Luke, who will just round off our morning with some, some beautiful carols for us.